And the first thing we're going to check is for the left button. So comparison, add a condition in there. Uh, click on the left bracket of owner of trigger unit. Change it to be dialog and scroll down and change it to be use dialog item. So we check that the use dialog item equals equals left button. So if you press left, then we're going to variable, oops, variable, modify variable integer. We're going to modify the player viewing for player function t triggering player. So we're going to modify the player viewing for this player to be minus one. Then right after that, we're going to check if if they uh, if they went below zero, we want to correct it. Like if some if you know you got a lot of things you got to compensate for BattleNet lag, and you know somebody might hit your dialog button like ten times in a row, just spamming it while there's lag or something, and you don't want your system to break. So what we're going to check here is that the value of this variable player viewing uh, triggering player is not. I mean, is less than or equal to zero. And the reason we want to check this is to hide the hide the previous button when they hit the leftmost hero. And as well, um, if they spammed it and there was battle net lag, and suddenly they they chose negative four, there's no there's no hero at negative four index or whatever. So it's gonna like cause an error or something, and they might bug out and then have to quit. Or something. that's not a good thing for your player. So if they do happen to click zero or anything less than it, we want to hide the dialog item of, of uh, what's it called, the uh, left button, hide left button for convert player to player group, function triggering player. So we're going to hide it for this player, and uh, don't really know what else we need to do here, oh yeah, we need to do another thing. Um, we need to, and this is just a advance for me screwing up later. We need to actually show show the uh, the next button, the right button, for convert player to player group function. I'll try and explain this in a sec here. So right after this, we're going to make the right button. So if you spam click right, we want to make sure that as soon as you start clicking left, this button is going to show up again. Uh, so this is just a backup for that. Um, and uh, what do we want to do here? Oh yeah, we actually have to do the camera application. So um, new action anywhere in here, camera, apply camera object. And now this is where uh, the brilliance of these variables comes in because instead of having to apply a specific camera, we can just go to our variable and we just want to apply cameras, func uh, variable, player viewing, function triggering player. So let's say the player is viewing Rory and they click the left button. So you want their camera when if they're viewing Rory it'll be like this and then when they click the left button they want to go to Nova. So what we're going to do is set their player what they're viewing to be minus one so it'll go from index one to index zero. Then we check that it's less than or equal to zero and if it is then we hide the button or whatever and in this case that would happen. And then it's going to hit this point here and it's going to apply cameras player viewing triggering player and it just got set player viewing triggering player just got set to zero so it's going to apply camera zero and what's camera zero well we just set camera zero to camera one so this camera will get applied which is perfect for us and one line does that take care of that entire thing um, so for the player we want it to be for the triggering player over uh, maybe one second is more ideal don't want people to wait too long Existing velocity is good, and we'll show the right button just because uh, it's backup, like I said. And we'll have to do the opposite. So for now, when the player presses the copy paste that whole if then else, when the player presses the right button, if that's what they pressed, um, we want to set their player viewing to equal plus one. And um, oh, and I did miss this uh, in here. Uh, say it does go less than z less than zero. We actually want to do variable set variable set player viewing for the triggering player uh, to equal zero. Just a flat out zero. So if someone was in battle net lag and they spammed the button in there and this thing got called like six times um, and it's going to be a minus three or something then this will this will take care of it and set it back to zero. This thing right here. So if it's less than or equal to zero it's going to set it back to zero and then it's going to apply the right camera. 
and um, I should take care of it. Let me copy that in here too. Um, except this has to be four. We're gonna, so we're going to modify the player viewing plus one when they click the right button, so it'll jump over to the next camera. Um, but then we need to check that it's greater than or equal to four, because that's our last our last camera index. Zero, one, two, three, four. So if they click beyond that, we don't want them to be able. Well, we don't want them to be able to click beyond that. So if it's greater than or equal to four, we'll set it to four. We'll hide the right button, so they can't click right anymore. And then we'll apply. This doesn't even have to change, I don't think. And this needs to change to show the left button. Um, so the reason we have this little thing saying in each of these is that if you do hit this point, the right button will be uh, hidden because this will get ran because you're on index four. So then if you click left, well, it's going to go, this trigger isn't even going to go run through. So it'll go to this one and it'll do all this, but then it needs to show the right button again because now you can go back right. So, um, so this is useful for that. I mean, in the middle points here, it's not really going to do much. Sorry everyone, I had a small interruption there. Um, but anyways, back to the trigger editor here. So um, the last thing we need to do is copy paste again and this time check if the use dialog item is the choose button. So maybe they finally chose their hero. Um, so we can pretty much delete all of this. Um, we do need this camera application though. Um, we will need to hide the dialog completely and hiding the dialog will hide all of its items because it's a parent of it or whatever. So we will hide the variable chooser dialog for not all players, but for convert player to player group, function t triggering player. And we can delete that. So we need to apply, instead of this weird thing, let's apply the function default game camera for player triggering player over one second. And let's copy paste that and do a camera pan camera. So we're going to pan the camera for function triggering player to the value 0 0.001 that we made over one second as well and that's good and so we'll hide the dialog first and then we're going to pan there and then let's do a unit I'm going to move this up a bit unit C create unit facing angle let's create one uh, let me see how do I do this okay variable of function unit type of unit variable this is where our hero units variable comes in handy unit type of hero units variable player viewing look at this chain I'm getting going here function triggering player so let me explain this it's going to create one unit type of the hero unit that the player is viewing for this triggering player so all of our setting up here of setting these setting the player viewing when they change their when they press left or right comes in handy here where we actually can just create whatever number they're on. So if they're on index 3 it'll create uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, it'll create Kerrigan. Um, so for this player is viewing index 3, it'll create here units 3 which is Kerrigan at, for player, triggering player, at, um, at point zero zero one, And that's fine. And we're going to also do a little subtle thing here which is unit selection clear unit selection. So we're going to deselect all units for function triggering player and then we're going to do a selection of the hero. So uh, unit selection, select unit, select last created unit for player function t triggering player. So now they've got the hero selected, their camera's panned over, they got the default camera um, but their camera's still locked. So we need to camera lock camera input, set it to unlock for player function t triggering player and then what else do we need to do oh yeah we need to bring the game UI back so UI s show slash hide game UI so we want to show it for not for all players but just for this guy player group I mean convert player group for the triggering player so that should take care of that um, I hope I covered everything, but let's go in game and see just how much I screwed up, or maybe maybe I lucked out my, like my last tutorial and got everything right. So let's find out. Okay, so Nova turns out to be cloaked, so that was not the best hero choice, but we can see this. And I should have hit the previous button right away, otherwise this will bug out. So uh, don't press that. But the next works. Next works. Previous. Next. Nice. And you can spam it and see it disappears when it goes over the limit. 
which is nice than the previous button does now, but uh, we have to disable it right away. I'll remember to do that. So let's choose, let's say we choose uh, Tosh here. Or actually, let's choose Kerrigan. Okay, so I got it. My camera's good to go around and everything pretty much works. Wow. I'm getting pretty lucky with my tutorials actually working out pretty well. Um, so this is pretty cool. Everything works pretty much. So let's just go back in and finish one last touch off here that I missed. Okay, so back in the trigger editor, back when we made the dialogue, um, let's copy this action, and we need to hide the previous button. So add an action. Uh, oops, we need to change it to be uh, dialogue. Where's dialogue? We need to change it to be show slash hide dialogue item, and we want to hide last created dialogue item for all players. So that way the previous button is disabled initially because you start on the leftmost hero. And um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, some good dialogue stuff here maybe will help people understand that it's pretty good and you know using I mean if I didn't use these variables trying to deal with setting the camera to be the next one would be such pain but I mean I can do it in pretty much one action here because everything's being controlled through like these numbers and indexes um, and I hope people understand that and can apply that um, to a lot of different things um, I mean this loop here for instance I mean I was able to make the text hang above all the units without having to do anything manual and that's a good thing because if you change the name of a hero later, you might forget to change it in here if you type in the text directly. Um, now you could add more advanced stuff like in your game screen on the dialogue. Add another dialogue up here with little icons for the heroes and maybe highlight the one that you're currently on when you're clicking through here. Um, it's up to you to kind of make it more customized. This is sort of a generic thing that I hope uh, people can actually take as a base for their own hero choosers or even just use it. I mean, simple is good, right? Like. You don't want to over congest things. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this tutorial was appreciated for uh, more hero stuff. And I'm actually hoping to make another hero tutorial, um, a complete hero tutorial, including items, everything, um, and just one big fat tutorial. Um, but even me, I'm going to have to do a lot of research for that because it's I forget things all the time, like doing veterancy and all that stuff. So. I'll try and figure it out again. Anyways, um, thanks for watching, and uh, good luck with your hero choosing.